All right, this is called Autopsy Slides and Survivor's Guilt Go Hand in Hand. I was 13 when Jane told me that she could swallow electricity out of the air. So I wasn't surprised two years later when her mother called and said that she struck lightning in the bathtub on purpose. A week after she died, her parents came to me, palms bleeding and held outward asking me to purge pieces of their daughter into pretty words and lay them out like decorations at the burial. The day their world officially ended, I was huddled between my walls, chasing guilt away with coffee and cigarettes, wondering about whether or not their family would speak to me again. They haven't yet. One month ago, she would have turned 18, and sometimes I forget to eat. Matthew, Matthew stopped believing in the stars when his mother started calling him by his father's name. He keeps a wallet in his back pocket that he's had since the day Jane hit puberty in sixth grade, but when you open it, it's empty. He never used it to bury bills, just to remind him of the things he never had, and what he would do to beat the plague that ate his mother alive into submission, so that she wouldn't have to. Nine months later, Matthew drank her shriveled cancer corpse from a ceramic shot glass and told me that it hurt not having her on his skin, and even more not writing about it. Fragments and run-ons stumbled past my lips while I mourned the childhood that once hid between his teeth in silence. The day I met Chase, he was smearing memories of me onto autopsy slides, said that he saw me when he was on acid, pulling pebbles from my throat and mixing them into the soil. I didn't know, but I said I did. When he put the glass cases away, they were tucked neatly in the camp corner of a filing cabinet. His hands were too accurate for his age, but still fumbled on the lock of the drawer, fingers unsure about the exactness of movement. We counted particles of dust in the room, and I listened to the sighs of the dead. It reminded me of the way Matthew's mother breathed just before her heart gave out and put, the crater in, put a crater in the sky. I wanted to record the sound, play it back for him when the ghost of his youth returns, tell him that it's okay to feel burned by for her photos, tuck that tape in his wallet so that when he opens it, he remembers to keep breathing, because I know what it feels like to want to stop.